Hello everybody, Kyle here from Web Dev Simplified. In this video, I'm going to be going over asynchronous versus synchronous programming, which is a concept that confuses many beginner to intermediate level developers. It's also a pattern that is incredibly common in JavaScript and especially in Node.js, so it's something that you need to have a fairly strong understanding of before you can start to truly use these languages and frameworks to their full potential. So let's get started now. I'm going to start by explaining the differences between asynchronous and synchronous code. Synchronous code will start at the very top of a file and execute all the way down to the bottom of a file, each line in order, until it gets to the bottom and it'll stop. Asynchronous code starts out very similar, where it'll start at the top of the file and execute the code until it gets to the bottom, but during that execution, it'll run into certain asynchronous functions or code where it'll split off and execute that asynchronous code separately from the rest of the code, and that's usually because it needs to wait or do some operation that takes a long period of time. So the synchronous code will execute from the top to the bottom, but the asynchronous code will start at the top and execute until it hits something that is asynchronous, and then it'll execute that and the rest of the code at the exact same time. And it'll do that for every asynchronous thing it hits. So you may have multiple different threads running your different code in different sections. So your code may execute in a different order, but in synchronous code, it always executes in the exact same order. And that's really where the difference comes from. Asynchronous code is harder to work with because it'll execute in a different order every single time potentially, which means that you have to make sure that your code will work no matter which path it takes, whether it executes everything in order, in reverse order, or any other scrambled order that you haven't thought about before. So let's jump into some examples in Visual Studio Code, showing you the differences between asynchronous and synchronous code. Right now, I just have a really simple JavaScript file open and on the right, I have the console for that file open so we can see the different things that I print out. I'm going to start by writing an incredibly simple synchronous file here. So we'll just start by declaring two variables. We'll say a equals one and b equals two. And then we're going to log out those variables to the screen. So we'll log a and then we're going to log b. And if we save that, you'll see it prints one and then two. And that's because as we expect, the first variable that we print here is a, which equals one, and the second variable we print is b, which equals two. So as we can expect, they're in order from top to bottom, one, then two. And if we put anything else in here, let's say we just want our console, console.log, and if we just want to say synchronous, and if we save that, you'll see that it'll print synchronous before one and two, and that's because it comes before, and in synchronous files, it'll always execute top to bottom. But what happens if we throw in some asynchronous code? So let's do it here above all the rest of our synchronous code. We're just gonna use the set timeout function, which is by nature an asynchronous function. This function takes another function that it'll execute after a certain amount of time, which you specify. So we'll just tell this function here to do a log and we'll just say async code right there. And then we have to specify how long we want it to take. So we'll say it'll take 100 milliseconds before it executes. And if we save that, you'll see that our async function down here prints after our synchronous and one, two, three, even though it comes before them in the actual flow of the file itself. And that's because the set timeout doesn't actually run the function in here until after these 100 milliseconds. And at that point, all of the rest of this code is already run because it sees this function queues this other function to log this after 100 milliseconds, and then just keeps going as soon as it logs that. And it doesn't wait for anything else to finish executing. And that's what makes asynchronous code so powerful because you don't have to wait these 100 milliseconds in order to print out this log. You can just keep going with the rest of the code. And then after 100 milliseconds, it'll just come back to this function. And set timeout is not the only form of asynchronous code in JavaScript that's built in. The concept of promises, which is something that you see whenever you see a dot then, or dot catch coming after a function, especially when you're doing fetching, for example, is another great example of asynchronous code that you don't actually know how long it's going to take since you don't specify the timeout. So let's create a fetch function in here. And we're just going to fetch the index page that I have, which is just an empty page essentially. And then, so with promises, you put that dot then, and then you give it a function. And this function is going to execute as soon as this fetch is done. So it's going to fetch the index page of my application. And then as soon as that's done, it'll call this dot then function. And inside of here, we're just gonna log fetch. And if we save that, you'll see that fetch happens after synchronous A and B are printed out, but it happens before async is actually printed out. And that's just because fetch 
is quicker than 100 milliseconds in this case. And it may look really simple. You may think, well, of course, set timeout will happen after the stuff that comes after it, and fetch will happen after because it has to go get something. But a lot of times what tricks people up is they may, in this set timeout, want to print out the a variable, for example, but afterwards, they just say that a equals 10, for example. So instead of 1, they think it'll print 1 here in this timeout, and that it'll print 10 down here. But in reality, it's going to print 10 inside of the timeout. We can just say timeout here so we know which one's which. And if we save this and run it, you'll see that it prints out 10 for a, even though a is not set till 10 until after the set timeout. But that's because the timeout, as we said, occurs 100 milliseconds after it hits the line where it sets the timeout. And we set a equal to 10 after the timeout. And this is something that really confuses a lot of people, especially when it's not obvious where your timeouts are and your async functions are, and your variables start to get messed up. This is why if you're using some form of asynchronous function, it's almost always better to pass the variables into that asynchronous function, other than relying on them from outside the asynchronous function, since they could be changed by the rest of your program without you actually knowing it, and it could cause a lot of problems. And a way to really spot asynchronous functions is every single asynchronous function, for the most part, is going to take a function as a parameter, which is going to be called after a certain delay, which is the asynchronous part of it. Not every single function that takes a function as an argument is asynchronous, but in general, most functions that take function arguments are going to be asynchronous, so that's one way that you can spot these asynchronous style functions. And that's really all there is to asynchronous versus synchronous code. It's really a pretty straightforward concept but it can really be difficult to wrap your head around because it's not intuitive to have code executing in different threads and at different times than the way it's listed inside of the actual file here. So hopefully this helps you understand the differences between asynchronous and synchronous code a bit better and allows you to use some of these functions like fetch and set timeout more effectively without running into any bugs. If you did like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Also, check out my videos linked over here, which are going to be for more JavaScript related content. Also, let me know down in the comments below anything that's confusing you guys so that I can make videos on these topics to hopefully help you and others out with this problem. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a good day.